So today I felt like going back and changing my model's pupils because as I keep doing more models, things on my first model, which was this model, keep pissing me off. The main problem with this is that the pupils are directly linked to the eyeball parameters. But what you really should be doing is making a warp deformer, title it something like R pupil X Y, and then this controls the eyeball X and Y. The reason is because you might have some other things going on with your pupil. And you might see it with a lot of the upper class models that people do. They have a, a bunch of eye jiggle physics. Or for this model I did recently, I actually have three pupils on each eye, which change based on the X angle. On this model I don't actually have that, but one of my original ideas was to have the pupil move around like a lava lamp kind of. Sadly I never got around to that, but if I set up my pupils like I did here, I would have immediately ran into something wrong by not putting the warp deformer on. So setting up these warp deformers, I actually like having the conversion divisions as low as possible, which would be 2 by 2 because you're only moving the X and Y, so unless you're looking for some weird 3D thing, then multiple conversion divisions don't actually matter. The whole thing's just going to move anyways. Basically, the way I like to set this up, I select both pupil deformers, add three keyforms on each of these. I go to negative one on eyeball X, that's looking to his right, but our left. I just drag both of these to the left, and then I select only the right pupil XY, and then make sure you also hold down shift while you move it to the left. That way it makes it so it only goes on one axis, it doesn't actually go like up or down. But you can make it go up and down, it's just harder. With negative one eyeballs X selected, move them to his right or our left. Then I isolate the right pupil, because that actually has more range of movement when you're looking around, and you can test this out in a mirror. And then I do the exact same thing for him looking left or our right. Hold down shift, move it over, isolate the left pupil, move it over even more. Test out to see if they have the same range of movement. Then we're just going to do the Y. With eyeball X0 selected and both the pupil warp transformer selected, hold down shift, move it up. Do the same thing for eyeball Y down. There's no extra range of movement things we have to do with this because up and down is, you know, the same on both sides. The same on both pupils. So to test the movement, a good idea is to link these parameters and then move them around. You can see these corners, even though they say things like one and one, it actually shows the same position as 0, 0. That's because we only did this one, this one, this one, and this one, but we need to synthesize the corners. With these parameters linked and selected, go up here, hit synthesize corners, default value. It could also be center value in this case, but it really doesn't matter. Basically, the difference here would be what you have the parameters set the default as, and then what the average of the parameters is. But in this case, eyeball x is negative 1 to 1, and eyeball y is negative one to one and they both average to zero and the default for both parameters is zero so these are actually exactly the same hit ok and then you move it around and you can see that you have free pupil movement then be sure to save if this preview right here isn't enough you can go to modeling open physics slash scene blending settings hold down left click and move around and by the default settings your eyeball x y follow your mouse x y when you're holding down the left mouse button so you can see the full thing in action. Here's him with my hair. I had to turn the hair off because it gets in front of my eyes. But yeah, those are the absolute basics for setting up pupil movement. Not only is this method easy, but it's also sustainable because if you want to put more stuff in your pupils, then all you have to do is put them in the warp deformer that controls the eyeball X, Y, and then it moves with them. Even if you don't have anything planned, like on this model, it's just only the pupils. If there's ever the day where I decide to put something in there or maybe try to do the lava lamp thing again, then since I did this sustainable future-proof method, then by doing it right the first time, I'm saving myself work the next time. If you found this helpful, I'm glad I could help. And if you didn't find this helpful, then I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe the next one will be helpful. But either way, you won't know if you don't subscribe. Therefore, the most logical choice is to subscribe and watch every single one of my videos.